science is about understanding the physical world and answering the question of how things happen. Uh, religion, it seems to me, is concerned with a different set of questions, namely the questions of why. Is there a meaning and purpose at, in what's going on? So I don't think that science and religion are competitors that, uh, in conflict with each other. They are, in fact, complementary. We need both to understand the world in which we live. Radio telescopes are giant aerials linked together electronically and pointing into outer space. Day and night they listen into the radio waves that come from galaxies in the furthest parts of the universe. We live in a strange universe. There are a hundred billion star galaxies and each star galaxy is made up of a hundred billion stars. Just one of these stars is our sun. The universe existed for 11,000 million years before life appeared on our planet. The sun for about one billion. Scientists, philosophers and theologians have long argued whether humankind is the fruit of mere chance or whether there is a grand design behind our existence. In the past, people have pointed out that the universe seems ludicrously over-designed if its only function was to produce a carbon-based life form like ourselves to inhabit a single planet. The universe seemed bigger and older and more complicated than could possibly be necessary. But nowadays, there's a wide agreement among scientists that given the laws of physics that operate in our universe, all those billions of stars and billions of years are necessary before one human being could exist. That fact is one of many uncovered within the last 30 years, which leads to the view that our world is not just any old world, but one exquisitely designed to lead up to the appearance of intelligent life. The only form of which we know is the human race. The city of Cambridge, England has been for several centuries the centre of the scientific world. Some of the great discoveries of the past took place here. Isaac Newton, Cavendish, Calvin, Maxwell, Rutherford, some of the greatest names in astronomy, physics and chemistry all studied and taught here on the banks of the Little River Cam. The Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge houses a museum which displays some of the original apparatus with which the epic discoveries were made. These are the hallowed relics of the great heroes of scientific history. Crookes' experiments with cathode ray tubes and Wilson's invention of the cloud chamber led to the most exciting work in the early part of this century when Rutherford and others learned with their particle accelerators about the structure of the atom. In the ancient world, science and religion were not separate pursuits, but were together unified in humanity's search for truth. John Pokinghorn, former professor of theoretical physics and currently president of Queen's College, is one man who brings the two disciplines together in his work. When I was at school, I was quite clever at mathematics, and I came up to Cambridge to read mathematics, and while I was here, I got interested in the remarkable way in which one could use mathematics to understand the physical world. And that led me into theoretical physics. And I was a university teacher for uh, over 25 years. Eventually, I was a professor here in Cambridge and ran a large research group, which I enjoyed very much and felt to be a Christian vocation, in fact, to use my talents in that way. So when I began to think that I would do something other than physics, it was natural to think about the possibility of serving the church in some way. And the idea of ordination uh, came to me, and fortunately also to my wife, quite quickly over a period of a few months. 
was very strange becoming a student again at about the age of 50 and listening to lectures rather than giving them, but I enjoyed that. And then I went off into parish life to learn how to do the trade, and I was a uh, curate in Bristol, and then I was a vicar in Kent for a short while. But I decided that part of my ministry was to write and think about uh, science and religion. And so when I was offered an unsought opportunity to come back into the academic world, first as the uh, Dean of Trinity Hall here in Cambridge, I decided that that was the right thing for me to do. And now I've drifted a little bit further upstream on the CAM to Queen's College where I'm now its president. The president's quarters in Queen's College date back to the 16th century. It was in these ancient and gracious surroundings that I asked John Pokinghorn about the age-old tensions between science and religion. I think modern science, 20th century science, is more hospitable, encouraging to a religious point of view uh, than it might have seemed at some previous periods. There are various reasons for that. One is that we realize that the world is mechanical and therefore it's, it's a world more interesting and open to, to, to God's action uh, within it, it seems to me. One is that we've come to realize how marvelous the world is and how uh, delicately balanced and structured it is. And the more you realize that, the more you seem to see signs of mind in nature and the more you seem to feel that there's something going on here, which is more than science can talk about. There's, you seem, the more you're driven to the idea of an intelligence behind the physical universe. 20th century science is very encouraging to that, I think. Scientists generally agree that all the matter and energy in the universe began as a hot, dense concentration of space-time, smaller than anything we can imagine, which exploded and expanded to form the entire universe, and indeed is still expanding. Some scientists believe the universe possesses no conserved qualities other than those of positive and negative fields of force, which average out precisely to zero. This brings us very close in scientific terms to the idea of creation out of nothing. In 1964, the early generation of radio telescopes first detected the feeble background radiation left over after this primeval explosion, known as the Big Bang. Today, the radio telescope here in Cambridge can detect objects 12 billion light years away. But this also means one can examine objects as they were 12 billion years ago, three quarters of the way back in time to the Big Bang. The history of the universe is an astonishing story because the universe as we know it started 15 billion years ago and it started very, very simple. It was just an expanding ball of energy and you can't get a physical system that's much simpler than that. And of course, over that 15 billion year history, it's become very rich and varied. It contains such interesting uh, consequences as you and me. So the history of the universe is a history of initial simplicity giving rise to great complexity. It's a story of great fruitfulness. One of the most interesting things we've come to realize in the last few years is that that history of simplicity turning into complexity wouldn't be possible in any old universe. It's only a very special universe, a very finely tuned universe, one might want to say, which is capable of producing men and women. So that, for example, if you were to slightly change uh, the ground rules of our universe, if you were to, for example, make gravity a bit stronger or make other forces of nature different in some way, that fruitful history that produced you and me would have become impossible. That's a very remarkable fact about the world. We live in a universe in a trillion. <laughs> 